The smart grid is critical to our future. If you look at the August 14, 2003 blackout, that was a warning. That was a warning because we have a, an, an unstable grid that's getting less stable year by year. It, it's, it really is the lifeblood of our economy. And, the, and, the, and when it goes out, you know, at some level, it's chaos. So suppose we had the smart grid in August 14, 2003. You'd actually have the grid talking to all your appliances in your home. So if you had that power line sag, instead of asking other power lines to take on more energy, you'd actually say, hey, all you refrigerators, freezers, and dishwashers, and everything, sh shut down for a for 15, 20 minutes while we figure this problem out. And every year there's a CEO conference and I went last week and the message I heard this year was more dire than I've heard in the past. We look at the world in utility time. Utility time means you gotta be looking 10 years out because it takes 10 years pretty much to permit and construct major generation in this country. If you look at the electric infrastructure in this country, it was built between 1919 and 1979. Our, uh, our electric grid is now getting to be over 30 years old. So now the concern at the national level and the message that we are told to give to our membership is, we, if nothing changes in this country, we'll be shutting lights out in 10 years because we don't have the energy supply. The, rea the reality is the nation has said no to all forms of generation, but we haven't been saying yes to, to forms of generation. So, you, so from a utility standpoint, our job, my job, is to really look at every generation opportunity as possible. You can throw solar panels on your roof in a, in a, in a couple, couple days. You could throw a wind turbine on your roof in a couple days. So you, we don't need 10-year projects in order to save our grid. What we need is a lot of local projects. So in order to have all this distributed generation work, you got to have a smart grid because you got to have the generators knowing what the other generator is doing and it's got to be matching the load. So you've got to have constant talking going on between your load and your generators. You don't want too much generation versus your capacity because you'll, you'll get too much voltage, you'll burn things out. You don't want too little because things will, all your light bulbs will dim. So it really is about minute by minute, second by second interaction between the generation and the, and the grid itself. If you look at the future, the future will be, the consumer will be able to take a look at the power mix, look at the carbon footprint, look where it's coming from and actually make decisions on where they're going to get their power from, how much they're going to pay for it. Um, and it, it can be and it, a highly individualized selection.